This all started with a trip to India back in 2015, traveling and teaching with uh, Village Ministries International. But it, get, get, it get, uh, gave the seeds of, uh, of, of teaching grace, Ron's suggestion to write a course on, the, on it, and then that, that's where this came from. Uh, anyway, this, in, in, in the past, I've just gone into one country at a time. Uh, Myanmar, I did two weeks in Myanmar, but other than that, I've done uh, just one week at a time. So I'm a, I was accustomed to doing 10Ks, and all of a sudden I'm doing a marathon here uh, over the last, uh, on this last trip with uh, three countries in a row because they're all bunched together. Uh, they're what I call the under underarm of uh, uh, of Africa. Uh, I look at that projection there on on the left here is the big left shoulder, and then therefore that's the underarm. Uh, no, they wouldn't appreciate that, but uh, it's it's an easy way to describe what they call West Af Sub Saharan West Africa. These Ghana's a little bit bigger than Alabama. Togo's less, just under half the size of Alabama. Benin's about 80% the size of Alabama. So it gives you an idea of the size of these three countries. And looking at the map, uh, there is a main highway that runs right along the coastline all the way from Liberia over into Cameroon. And the main population centers are right there along that coastline, especially in these three countries I was in. Uh, you get further north from there, and it appears to get go into more you know rural, small villages, small towns, etc. Uh, Ghana has about three north-south roads. Togo has one north-south road right up the middle of it. Benin has two north-south roads that go uh, up into the interior. But the only way to get from east to west is along this coastal highway, and I was never more than about 15 miles from the coast on this trip. I flew into Africa, Accra, and then we drove over to uh, Lome, and then over to uh, Cotonou, which is near the capital city of Porto Novo in, uh, in Benin. Uh, flight, I flew from from uh, Birmingham, Atlanta, through Amsterdam, down to Accra. As I said, we drove along the coast uh, between those three countries, and then I flew out of uh, Cotonou, Benin, up to Brussels, over to Chicago, and then back down, down to the uh, home. I had great um, connections going over I uh, got over there in about 24 hours. That's the fastest trip by far I've ever made. On the way back, it wasn't quite so fast. But God always tests me on my trips. He always puts all these impediments in my way. And it's just a, 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 a training ground for me to throw my, my, uh, my trust, my faith onto Him and keep reminding him, hey, Father, this is your trip, not mine. Uh, this time, when I got to the Birmingham airport, they said that your flight from Atlanta is delayed from leave, departing two hours. Well, I was only supposed to be in Amsterdam for two and a half hours. So that kind of puts a real tight schedule on, depending on how far away the gate is, and you never know. It, it may be quite a distance away. To walk, but uh, anyway, I didn't didn't worry about it. Certainly didn't get, get to the point of worry, but I just you know kept having to remind the father that hey, you got it, you got it, you got it. I know you got it. Well, I got to the get got off the plane in uh, in Amsterdam, walking out of, out of my uh, away from my gate, and I looked back up, and it said uh, next flight going to Accra. Well, it was my pl my flight. I got right back on the same plane. So it was like God's just, you know, hey, hey, yeah, I got you. Uh, I mean, the, the chances of that happening uh, just phenomenal when you're talking about a major airport. Uh, got there Sunday night. Monday was supposed to be a rest day, but uh, 
my host uh, had asked me to teach his seminary students, so you'll see that I, I taught there on uh, Somehow this didn't get changed. Hmm. I taught the seminary students on Monday. Uh, this apparently saved off an older version. I taught the seminary students on Monday, and then Tuesday through Friday, I taught the, uh, the four-day seminary, God's, God's Grace Plan for Man. And then on, on uh, Saturday, I actually attended a wedding. I'll show you that. Uh, some photos from that. Uh, one of the seminary students got married, so that was quite an interesting experience of, um, of going to a traditional Ghana wedding that had a lot of Western features that we were familiar with too, but uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then uh, on Sunday, I actually taught in the uh, church, the host church, uh, that morning, and then that afternoon we drove over to Lome. The, the official language is English, but... Over half the people in the class didn't seem to understand English enough to be able to follow, a, a, you know, a class. They can understand different phrases and all. All the signs on the streets are in English, so they can comprehend it to a degree. But they also had to translate it into Twi, T W I, which is the main, uh, the main language there. Uh, According to some uh, statistics I read on the internet, about 71% are, are Christian in the country. You see Islam, some animist practices, etc. Now here's Cyprian. He was the one who coordinated with me. Cyprian has an extensive history of studying tapes under Bob Theme, uh, from Bob Theme, long after Bob died, but... Uh, he was getting tapes, ordering tapes from Baraka. As a matter of fact, uh, they Baraka only sends out uh, one box of tapes per month uh, to any given subscriber. So he registered under all three of his names. So he got, th got three boxes uh, per month, and he said he was listening as much as seven hours a day during, during some periods. Um, he's studied a lot under, under uh, other doctrinal pastors. He's read a lot of uh, books that are involved in the grace doctrinal uh, movement. He's got a tremendous amount of doctrinal understanding. Uh, he and I, I mean, I, I couldn't see any difference whatsoever in our beliefs. Uh, so he is well set to be my representative there in West Africa. He's got all kinds of connections. He understands and, and stays on his, uh, the computer all the time, various social media. He's on Facebook. Jackie's already connected with him on Facebook. Uh, a lot of these photos, uh, all the information about my trip, everything is on his Facebook post. Uh, he, he filmed everything that I taught. Every time I taught anything, he filmed it. And he's making it, uh, intends to make it all available on his, on his Facebook site or, or YouTube or something. I don't, I'm not sure what, but he's, he's connected with a lot of uh, grace uh, pastors in the United States. He connected me with a guy who, uh, who wanted to give him some books, send some books with me. He asked me uh, he, at my address, so the guy was going to mail me the books, and I was going to hand carry the books over. Well, it turns out the guy lives in Pelham of all places. So uh, uh, so anyway, he and I have met now twice. So I've got a great friend, uh, Ken LaFleur, um, who may even go on some future trips with me and help me teach. Uh, very grace-oriented guy. Uh, again, he and I have compared doctrinal beliefs and we're totally lined up too. So Cyprian's a great uh, asset in many ways. And I got his name actually through Grace Evangelistic Ministries. So he has uh, also li has lined himself up with them and, and well known by them. I think he has hosted uh, Moses to come out there at some point. Now, as I said, on Monday afternoon, I taught, I, I told uh, Cyprian, I, he had originally asked me to teach on Saturday. And then when I changed the date to October, he said, no, we can't do it on Saturday because one of my guys is getting married. He got his wedding that day, and we're all going to the wedding. 
So I said, well, I got Monday. I need to rest up for the week from my trip, but I'll teach them two hours. Well, I wound up teaching four. Um, did not have to translate for these guys. They all knew English. And uh, I taught uh, spiritual gifts. So you want a, four, a good four-hour session on spiritual gifts, it's eventually going to be on YouTube or um, uh, Facebook or something. And anyway, he's already started. He's doing it in 10-minute segments. And the, he posted the first 10 minutes the, the day after, that afternoon uh, after I taught or that evening after I taught. And uh, by the next day, by the end of the next day, it already had over 200 views. So this is uh, a potentially very, very impactful. Um, some of the comments were, uh, I've been looking forever for somebody to teach on spiritual gifts. Nobody wants to touch it. I look forward to it. You know, those kinds of comments. The, the, the six of these guys in the photo are his students. Cyprian is is here. This is the guy that eventually got married. The, uh, I think the tall guy back here, he didn't know who he was. Showed up, he heard about the session and showed up and, and he attended all four days later that week. Uh, got into an argument with us one day, but uh, that's beside the point. Then the two women came in late that afternoon, so they didn't get the full brunt of, of the course, but uh, they're apparently... Uh, they come sometimes as he's teaching. But those six, those main core six guys are on fire. They're disciples. They, and when I say disciples, I mean they're disciplined students of the Word of God. And, and uh, some of them already pastor a church. Some of them are just considered themselves in training to pastor. These guys are solid. And I also, they, they all wanted to come over and meet me on Thursday night well, I'd taught all day, but I said, you know, come on over, and uh, since they're coming over, I'll teach them an hour of Bible study. Well, I taught them two hours. Uh, we were all pretty wiped by the time I got through late that night, but uh, uh, they're, they're hungry. There were about 70 or so uh, that uh, attended that, uh, that seminar, uh, seminar. They were heavy into in, in the Pentecostal area, as it seems I, it always happens when I go anywhere. Um, as I said, the pastor is very passionate about, uh, about carrying it on. I think that everybody took it to heart. They all were seemed to be totally sold and excited about the whole grace package by the end of the week. And uh, I, I always challenge them. I'm just here to plant a seed. I'm not coming back. You've got, you've got your country now. Your country is your responsibility, and they take that very seriously. Now, when we're driving around, um, anywhere I was driving around the, the area, about every half block there was a sign for a church. So that area is just saturated with churches, and I saw just about every denomination that you could think of, and a whole lot of them were Pentecostal, and I saw more Assemblies of God signs than, than anything else. And I mean, it seemed like about every mile there was an Assemblies of God uh, church. And, and uh, there was a Methodist, I saw a lot of a number of Methodist churches. There was a Methodist missionary who was staying at the hotel that I stayed at. Uh, I ate breakfast with him about three mornings. And he said that the Assemblies of God was the largest denomination in the country. So we're into a very... Pentecostal-centered uh, area that uh, that fights hard against eternal security, and we got a foothold. So you see the the battlefield there. Uh, these are just some photos of. Uh, well, the the top left is the church that we were in, that Assembly of God Church. You see the uh, poster that was down on one of the corners, uh, uh, one one of the uh, uh, street corners, actually a, a main highway. Uh, that and then the side street leads up to the church, and then of course, now the sweetest pastor that we had, you see there on the left, she uh, obviously has um, what do you call um, um, well, got the big eyes, Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Thank you, drawing a blank, and. 
she, the first two days, she just stared at this white man. And they, I mean, literally, I did not see another white person my whole three weeks, except for the Methodist minister, missionary at the hotel the first week, another Methodist minister, missionary at the hotel the second week, uh, a, a, um, a Methodist, he was a Methodist too, a Methodist female missionary that was go, crossing when I, when I went to the border, and uh, that was it. Those, those three, over three weeks, and between the airports, I saw you know, many whites, uh, white folks at the uh, airports, but other than that, it was all Africans and me. Uh, and then on the right there, you see our youngest pastor. Um, very positive young man. <laughs> he wasn't positive. He wanted to get a hug from me. But uh, that, once that young lady there on the left uh, started, I, I, I gave her a hug on the third day. And on the fourth day, she wouldn't leave my side. Anytime that I was not teaching, she was right there next to me and wanted to carry my Bible and help me out. A wonderful young lady. These were flags flying at my hotel. Now on the right, you see the Ghana flag, you know the second flag. The third flag, the green and white, is the African Union. Uh, and then anybody recognize the one on the left? China. So why I fly the American and the China flags? Because of the great influence that those two countries are having on their economy. It kind of lets you know what China's doing in Africa. A lot of oil in that area. And, and I see tankers off the coast there. And it's interesting. This was the wedding. Frank Mary Jane. Um, top left, these two, Abbott and Costello up here, they... Um, they put on a comedy routine for about at least an hour, and they, it was nonstop. I mean, batter back and forth, and I, I couldn't, or banter. I couldn't understand a word they said because it was all in twee, but everybody was roaring with laughter, and I had to laugh too because it was so funny with, with the way they were, they were going back and forth, but uh, that was quite entertaining. That was the tra traditional part, and then they had the, the, the uh, groomsmen come in and the, the bridesmaids come in and then finally the bride came in and they went through all kind of rigmarole uh, for a traditional ceremony that morning and then uh, had an actual taking of the vows at the end of that and then we broke and drove quite some miles for an afternoon uh, sit down dinner with music and dancing and something that you know we're, we're much more familiar with here it was quite an event all day event As I said on Sunday morning, I, I, I just gave a, a one, one hour and 15 minute uh, presentation at the Assemblies of God Church, gave, kind of gave an overview to the people of the congregation uh, about God's grace and uh, that I'd taught that week. Then that afternoon, we took a van, uh, size of the, the same size of the vans that go from, that you can rent to go from uh, Birmingham to Atlanta. Uh, airport and back. And the, the, those vans have four rows. Well, this van had six rows of seats. So you can imagine how tightly packed in we were. And I was in between, like this, in between two guys for four hours as we drove along the, the road there. Uh, Ghana's road systems were just terrible. They're, the condition of the roads, and there are potholes everywhere, but it's the craziest driving. I've been in a lot of countries. I've experienced a lot of crazy driving but this was the craziest I've ever been in. And uh, we, we're going along at 55, 60 miles an hour, three lanes of traffic. The lane on the right is slow. And then you got a slow one here on the left. So you're going in and out like this. We actually got clipped by a car as it accelerated past us. And he just kept going. So, you know, we just keep going. Um, it, it was, it was uh, kind of crazy driving. You were so, every time we'd stop, there's a lot of red lights, even on that main east-west highway. Uh, every time you'd stop, you'd just be swarmed with these vendors, and all the women would wear their, you know, their, their goods were up on their head. 
And I'd see it was a uh, whole big old things of, of soda cans, you know, stuff what had to weigh 40 pounds, 40, 50 pounds. And they're just walking along with balanced on their head. The picture on the left is right after we went across the border. Now, Cyprian went with me the whole time. He was with me the whole time. Uh, his phone, of course, works in Ghana because he's from Ghana. We took one step across the border there and the phone quits working. Doesn't work in, in uh, Togo. So we're now in a foreign country where there are just black faces, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of black faces around us. I'm the only white guy standing out there and by the side of the road, and we stood in there for about 45 minutes waiting on uh, the, uh, pa the host pastor to come pick us up. And, and motorcycles, cars, it, it's just, it's just a, a riot. But uh, we had, a, they're always handlers. They're, they're guys just standing there wa watching for somebody to come across the border and then they come up and offer to help them. So that you wind up giving them a tip, but they stay with you. So they're kind of your security because they're known among the folks that are standing around there. And uh, they, um, that's the guy that we used, uh, um, Cyprian used his phone to call his friend and tell him to come pick us up. And you know, some woman walks along topless, uh, fat woman, everything just hanging out. And uh, Cyprian asked me, nobody's paying any attention to her. Cyprian asked me, he said, uh, y'all have crazy people in, uh, in, in the United States? I said, yeah. <laughs> it's, that was, and, and it was getting dark too. Uh, the sun was, was already gone down and it was almost dark when they finally came. So I was, uh, you know, again, Put, throw, throw in the, the father. This is your, this is your trip. You got us. Togo. Uh, now we're in French country, French-speaking country, and nobody speaks English. Very few people speak English. Just a word here and there. So that was a two-week struggle with that issue. Now you see the number percentage of Christian drops drastically. I've not even been in an African country where the percentage was lower than in the 90s until I just showed you uh, Ghana was down around 70 some in the 70s. Well, Togo is, is minority Christian, and then it's the highest African, uh, traditional African religions uh, in the whole, on the whole continent. So there's a lot of paganism still rampant, primarily up in the, uh, in the more remote northern areas. So once we start moving up there, we'll be combating that big time. And I told you just before I left, I think I did, uh, that Joe Somme had encountered a, uh, had been asked to speak at a, um, on, a, on the Friday before I left on Saturday, he spoke at a, uh, con uh, um, a meeting with some villages that had been traditionally pagan African religions there in Malawi. And they had a shrine, big shrine that was well known or all around. And the Malawi government would not let Christians come into those villages and evangelize because they wanted to protect the traditional African religions that were, you know, had, had for, for a thousand years had, had worshiped at this shrine. So anyway, this summer, a flood of uh, the never size of, they'd never seen came through and washed away the shrine. Well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, before that, the the villagers, the village chiefs, had asked the pastor, Christian pastors of churches around the, the surrounding villages, if they would come teach them about Christianity. Well, they knew about Joe Sum's reputation as a teacher, so they asked Joe Sum to come and be the speaker. So that Friday before I left. Josam stood before a, a crowd of four or five hundred villagers and gave them the gospel. Ninety-five came to Christ, you know, professed that they came to Christ on that day. Um, and then the, he met with the village chiefs, and they told him that they had been offering human sacrifices and in that shrine for years. And Josam said, I, "Since I was a child, I've been hearing about people disappearing." 
and the in from these villages, and they would just say, "Well, a, a lion got them, or some, some they were they were uh, uh, captured and, and taken away, or whatever." But uh, they had been actually offered as animal as, as human sacrifices in, inside the shrine, and they would also go to fathers and tell them they wanted their daughter, and they'd bring the daughter in as a prostitute inside the. Uh, so anyway, God took care of that this summer, and uh, they're they're on their way. But that's in Malawi, so that's different different thing. But anyway, the animus, the the, the old uh, African religions are still uh, rampant there in uh, in that country or in that on that continent. Uh, Bruno there in the middle was my host pastor. He went to seminary for four years down in South Africa, where Tom Molinar, uh, we we support as a church, support Tom and Cheryl in South Africa. It was one of his uh, uh, instructors. He's been attracted to grace teaching ever since, but he's very much Pentecostal. And every morning when I would arrive at the church, he was already there on the microphone speaking in tongues, or he thought he was, and you could hear him a block down the street. So the, everybody in the neighborhood hears all this rigmarole going on. And every morning, there were about 18, I'd count them, about 18 women and two men. And the women would be all jumping around, doing their tongues thing. And uh, so anyway, I'd walk in, and they, they'd noticed me after you know, a minute or two. And then they'd sing a song and then turn it over to me. So I'd just teach them the rest of the day. And then the men start gradually coming in. But anyway, uh, Bruno was very attracted to the grace idea. He seemed to accept everything I taught. I don't deal with tongues. I don't deal with uh, the spiritual gift aspect. I mentioned them briefly in passing, but I don't make an issue out of it. So hopefully he'll uh, eventually come around. He was a very good host. On uh, Monday, Monday was a free day because we taught uh, Tuesday through Friday. Well, there is a pastor named uh, Ben, Benjamin something or other, and he's closely tied in with Grace Evangelistic Ministries. I'm not sure what all the connection is, but he is a Baptist pastor. This was his church that you see on the left. He asked through Grace Evangelistic Ministries if I could speak at his church. So they lined that up, and I actually taught at his church for two hours that on Monday night. So you see the crowd there. And I thought that you might be interested in uh, seeing what God's grace plan for man looks like translated to French. Can anybody read that? The, the title up there, can you see that? La grace est permanente. The grace is permanent. So that was that's my chapter called uh, the Permanent Grace. So... There were about 50 pastors that uh, would show up by the end of the day. As I said, it'd start out almost all women, and then uh, men would drift in. And Bruno had actually asked that we delay uh, or do the conference on the weekends. Well, I didn't know that. He asked uh, Cyprian. Cyprian didn't pass that on to me. Cyprian said, no, he says he wants it Tuesday through Friday, so that's the way it's going to be during the day. Uh, they wanted to go into the evenings because the problem is that the men in Togo work. They all, even the pastors, they all have to have extra outside jobs to work. So when they'd get through with their work or did enough work to supply their family, then they'd drift in to, to the seminar. So by, by lunchtime every day, I'd have pretty much 50 uh, people, uh, about half of them men, there were some from that Baptist denomination that were in the Monday night uh, class that would come in, but uh, most of them were involved, they seemed to be involved with tongues, etc., based on their quest the question and answer sessions that I had. But again, we had great reception. Uh, everybody seemed to be bought in by the end of the week, and they took very seriously the idea uh, that I was planting seeds, and they were, that, that they were responsible for their country uh, from here on out. You see the group with me and, uh, and uh, Bruno was my translator. He was act had actually gotten sick just before 
I got there and did not think he was going to be, have the strength to, to translate, but he wound up translating seven hours a day, four days. So he, he was, it was a good lesson for him to teach him to trust the Lord for his strength because he very much recognized that, that God provided him the strength to, to do that. And it's just as hard for, and probably harder for the translator because he has no idea what I'm going to say. And then he's got to immediately, you know, in his mind, put it into French and spit it out. Uh, because of all the women in the class, they had a bunch of little kids running around. And all the kids looked like they were about five years old and below. So they were running all over the place. Uh, there was no side on one side of the... Uh, one side of the church was completely open, so all this is a courtyard out there uh, on, on to the right there. And so the kids were all out there playing while I was teaching and on the breaks at lunch and all, I'd play with the kids. And, I, if, you know, the first day they all stare at this big white man and then uh, I start getting them a little bit. By the second day, one of them is brave enough to come get a hug and then the others want hugs. And by the last day, uh, they were all, had to all have their hugs. And I mean, they just hold on to me and it, it was pretty neat. Uh, had a lot of fun with the kids. On Saturday then, Bruno drove us two hours to the Benin border, and I took some photos on the way. Uh, about half the distance, we were right on the, right, right on the beach. So you see the beach, you see the uh, ocean out there beyond, and, and there were hundreds of big tanker ships or, or cargo ships out there. Uh, I thought I'd take that picture of the guy on the motorcycle holding the big thing on his head as he goes. You know, you can imagine driving 60 miles an hour down the road, hanging on the back of a, a motorcycle with this on your head. But it's, you see all this, uh, stuff like this all the time. I just didn't get photos of, of most of the things. But we had stopped at a red light, so I was able to get this photo. And then at the bottom, you see big uh, cargo, the uh, cranes and all. So the last half of that one uh, two-hour drive... We, were, we couldn't see the beach, but there were a lot of indus, industrial stuff in between us. So it was a big, big industry there with, uh, involved with the shipping industry. Well, we got to the border, uh, a little trouble crossing the border. I'm getting my visa, but uh, we, God worked that out. As I said, he always tests us. That third week, I had the seminar Monday through Thursday and then uh, departed on Friday and arrived back, back home on Saturday. Uh, some facts about Benin. It's also French language. It's slightly higher percentage of Christian than is Tomei, but uh, you still got very high percentage of Islam and uh, animist religions. The Benin, the church that we were in in Benin uh, had actually had had a family emergency just a couple of days before I got there and had to go to another country some distance away. He had to fly. And he actually called me after I arrived the first day and apologized for not being there himself. But he turned it over to a group of a committee, he called it, at his church. And they were very, very, very helpful. Uh, on arranging everything. This guy here was the assistant pastor, so he was officially in charge. This guy was my translator. He works, his full-time job is a translator for a university uh, between French and English, so he was excellent uh, to use as a translator. Uh, actually, he did about half of the translation, and then this guy is um, Aristide. Uh, he was not part of this church, he actually uh, goes to a Baptist church and wants to be their pa Officially, he's their assistant pastor, but they are it's a long story. But he spent also that same four years that Bruno was down in South Africa, so was Aristide. And Aristide got to know Tom and Cheryl very well and even calls Cheryl his mama. So uh, Aristide translated uh, about half the, half the time. These two guys about half a day each. And then this guy right here was, uh, he was the main one that coordinated all our rides, all, all our hotel, every, everything that we needed. And then, of course, there's uh, uh, Cyprian. The, 
this was my largest group by, a little, by just a little bit, 60, 70 pastors. Uh, they were from the, uh, the area around there for the most part. Did have one guy come, drive over from uh, Nigeria, which is the country to the, to the east, and he had heard for some, some way on Facebook, I'm sure, uh, through Cyprian's announcements or somebody's announcements, he found out about the conference and he drove all the way over and attended all four days of the conference. So we've got a foothold there in Nigeria. Uh, but other than that, it was, it, it was uh, all pastors. About 10% were women. Uh, they were, n nobody believed in salvation by faith alone. They all believed in salvation by works. Tongues were the big thing. I had some really interesting questions during the Q&A sessions about uh, how to drive out demons and various things that I uh, had to rely on the Holy Spirit for, uh, for the, a good answer. Now, um, you've seen these before, uh, those of you who've heard me before, but I, th this is the contents of the, the seminar, and because we're short on time, I'm going to move on through quickly rather than go over these. Cyprian stayed behind in Benin uh, two more days after I left, and he met with a bunch of pastors that had attended the seminary or seminar, and they are wanting him to come back and teach God's grace plan for man all up through that, their country. They all have contacts all, and churches all the way up to the north, and so the, the ground is white with harvest, all we need are funds uh, to, to help support Cyprian uh, to, to put on these conferences. Uh, he is prepared to do it. I mean, his full-time job is, to, is the, the, to run this seminary, uh, seminary for these six students, and he can do that on a part-time basis. They're well long enough to study th uh, books and things on their own while he's gone teaching these conferences. He's already got one set up for the third week of December. I have given him no promises of funding whatsoever, but he went ahead and set up uh, dates uh, there in the, in the middle of December there in uh, Benin and standing by for many more in Benin. Also in Togo, uh, on the way back, Back to Ghana, he stayed another day in Togo and met with a group of pastors that had attended the, sem the uh, seminar there. Same thing, they're ready to take this course all the way up through their country. And then uh, he himself, with the Assembly of God pastor who hosted me in Ghana, are ready to take it up all the way through their country. So seeds were planted, as I told them, uh, some seeds are fall on fertile ground, some on rocky soil, some are picked off by birds, and the birds are the ones, are those who are in the Assemblies of God, uh, for example, I know that their denomination is going to come in and try to convince them that I'm wrong about eternal security, for instance. Uh, so they're going to have all kind of opposition to try to convince them that they were, that I deceived them uh, in, in, the, in my teaching, but uh, you know, I, I told them there at the end uh, that you, you got a choice as to which kind of ground you are. And I um, mean, it's just mass response. We're fertile ground, we're fertile ground. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they just say something. I don't know what they're saying, but then my translator says, they say they're fertile ground. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's good to hear. Uh, so the potential is, is awesome. Uh, then uh, Cyprian also has contacts in Nigeria. He has because he pastored a church there for a while, and he has contacts in both uh, Burkina Faso and Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is the English translation of Coto de Ivory, um, so I, I call it Ivory Coast. But anyway, uh, that those are my targets probably for next year. I've kind of got them penciled in. I don't know which one. I won't go to all three. If I go to Nigeria, I'll probably stay two weeks and do two different courses there and, and within the country. If I go to uh, Burkina Faso, I'd go, I'd fly in there, fly, and then fly up to, uh, or I'd go to fly into Ivory Coast and then fly up to Burkina Faso and then out. 
So we'll just see what God has. But Cyprian would be the representative for all uh, five of the uh, six of those countries eventually, if we we're able to go there. So yeah, that, I was going to say that this is it. And if you've got any questions, Josh. Just curious, what's a rough estimate? I know it probably varies, but what is the cost for Cyprian to put on one of these? Um... Well, if we're targeting a hundred pastors, it uh, my experience with. Um, Josam is about four thousand dollars. Well, wait a minute. That includes Bibles because we're purchasing Bibles in Malawi. So uh, probably about probably about twenty eight hundred. Although the price of food has gone up considerably, the uh, the problem they're having of getting wheat because of Ukraine, uh, prices have doubled for food in these countries since since the first of this year. So. Are you providing published um, documents for uh, yeah. lessons? Yeah, that includes the printing of, uh, of these lessons and, and all, well, uh, Burkina Faso and Ivory Coast are in French, so I've already got it translated, so there's no translation cost. So we just print what, you know, print what we've got and, uh, but yeah, provide it, oh, that's key. That is key because I tell every one of the, the the people that you got this manual and you take it home and you got ten years worth of lessons to teach your your class and I, and I, I, I pound the table that the, the that the purpose of a congregational meeting is for teaching, not for jumping around. I use the example of the four hundred. Uh, false prophets of Baal that jumped around all day and cut themselves and yelled and screamed and with no result. And then Elijah made a simple, uh, simple prayer, Father, uh, you know, show, show yourself. And, and, and uh, I said, this is what teaching's all about. You've seen me teach this week. This is how you should be teaching your, your congregations. Forget all this jumping around rigmarole. And I said that to, in, in front of Bruno too. So. And they have Bibles there? Yeah, every country I've been to, the pastors have pretty much have Bibles. That doesn't seem to be a problem, but not Malawi. Malawi is the, the, the dirt poor exception. And of course, we're, we're in the rural areas in Malawi. Whereas, as I said, I was in a very populous area on all, all three of these countries. They're much more upscale, even though they have a lot of economic problems right now. They're relatively prosperous countries compared to other African countries. But but right now, they're uh, Ghana especially is in a deep recession. Gary, in that one picture, they're all holding something, a piece of paper. We give them a diploma at the end. Uh, just a certificate of attendance is what it is. But they value that. I mean, to, to here we'd throw it in the trash, but over there it, it means a lot. For mo most of them, it's probably the only diploma they've ever gotten, certificate of completion they've ever gotten. And it's a, it's a memento, it, you know, reminds them of it. Oh, they are all so, oh, the outpouring of, of, of love and appreciation I get at the end. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And I told, I put in my reports that I sent back about the one lady in uh, Benin who on Tuesday or on the second day, end of the second day, she asked a question about that. Are you going to teach it? We're eternally, we don't, can't lose our salvation. And I said, you just wait. So, you know, we got to day three and I taught it point by point by point and she still wasn't smiling on day three, but on but by the by the afternoon of day four, I mean she was a beam. Her face was lit up, and it was neat. Neat to see. All right. And just one last plea to uh, for for the ladies' trip to the Philippines. Thanks, Ron. You want to close it out? The yeah, opportunity, well, one, one guy in Togo, I think he was a Baptist pastor. Matter of fact, I think he was Pastor Ben, but I'm, I, I lose track. There's so many people, I lose track. And I saw him for so short on a 
on a Monday night. But anyway, he, in a question and answer session, he said, uh, do, would you, do you have any problems if we would copy from your book? And I said, he said, you have any publishing qualms or anything like that? I said, no. I, I, I picked up the, the, the French translation of my translator, and I said, you see, any, uh, you see my name on the front of this? Whose name's on the front of this? And it's God's grace plan for man. So if he didn't have a problem with it, I don't. <laughs> All right, let's stand and uh, pledge out. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.